There is one thing that brings every animal from the PA Woods and Forest community together. The horrible irony of it is, it's not something good, it's a parasitic nematode. This has been plaguing the lives of all of these animals in some way or another for either an extended period of time or in bumps of the road. We're going to be talking about this parasitic nematode today, but before we get into that, I wanted to talk about the future of the Grey Army, that's the Eastern Grey Tree Frogs. They were supposed to be a part, a key figure, in the upcoming project The Woods, which was going to feature them and American Toads inside a 125 gallon. However, due to finding the parasitic nematode in abundance inside members of the Grey Army, they had to be pulled out of the project and they're most likely going to have to vacate their spot in the 125 gallon. More updates on the woods to come in a minute, but the Grey Army has future plans, maybe involving them in the frog forest, but we'll have to talk about that in an upcoming video. The Grey Army is a really great addition, and I'm looking forward to giving you more updates in the next video on their future, as well as what they're going to be doing inside the PA Woods and Forest YouTube channel. Then we have a shot at looking at the woods, the American toads that are actually in the 125 gallon right now. You're looking at Ace, the female American toad who has been a key figure inside this YouTube channel for many years. Ace was the actual first guinea pig that we found the parasite off of. It almost killed her, but due to her strength and will to live and a really great vet, she was brought back to life essentially and now she's been thriving ever since. So we're hoping that the parasite no longer lives inside of her. Look at this beautiful female American toad. She's truly one of my greatest inspirations for being a part of this hobby with just how strong and passionate that she is for survival. There were times when it looked like she was going to die, but due to her success and my love for her, I'm going to make sure that I upgrade her to an even larger setup and the woods is going to become even more complex and more interesting to everybody, but you're going to have to stay tuned for that. We're seriously not going to give away spoilers, just showing you some pop-in shots either of Ace or Pius at the time. Now we're going to get into what we're going to talk about today. We're going to be featuring out of all the animals that we could in all of the enclosures, we're going to be focusing on the Dumpy family. Here you get a nice shot at Finn. You get a good opportunity to see him a little bit just rolling around inside the enclosure. And this is a really, really fun beta fish. Although he's been hiding a lot more since there's been plants added, Finn has been a key staple to the Dumpy family for over a year's time. Whenever you look at the towering plants high atop the Dumpy family's enclosure and you look at all of the subtropical terrain that they have to roll in, you would be fooled to think just because they're exotic animals that they don't have this horrible parasite, but you would actually be wrong. The Dumpy family, somehow, some way, either through soil or contact in one way or another, has been exposed to this parasite. The nice thing about the Dumpy family, while they've been exposed to this parasite, is that they've been able to control it and nobody has had any severe attacks. They've also seen the vet and there's been some small cases of monitoring all of the Dumpy family members especially our good friend Max, who you get a chance to see an up close and personal shot of here. The thought is the White's tree frog dries itself out a little bit more than most tree frogs. They like it a lot warmer and they don't sit in the water. So this horrible parasitic nematode has a hard time grasping their immune system, 
with this different environment that these frogs are from. Regardless on where a frog would be living in the wild, whether it's the forests of Australia or Indonesia, or the forests of the United States, and anywhere in between, parasites are a common part of life for frogs. With a lot of different things going on inside the environment, we have actually been a big cause of bringing parasites and a lot of other harmful things to frogs these days. Whether it's through climate change, pollution, deforestation for timber, exposure to UVB, or using pesticides and fertilizers, there's many reasons why frogs will get parasites, diseases, and have genetic mutations. The forest, however, is a much more stable environment. The forest is so important to frogs and toads because there's usually not, deep in a forest, exposure to fertilizers and pesticides and cutting down the trees for timber. There's usually not a lot of these things if it's a stable forest. In a perfect world, these are the conditions that some frogs actually do inhabit. On this channel, you have an opportunity to see such a thing. But the problem also is, in captivity, there's also a chance for parasites. It's not possible to treat every wild frog, but the frogs that we have in captivity, it is our goal and it should be our personal agenda to treat and make sure that the frogs living in our care would be taken care of to the best of our ability. Not only frogs, but American toads as well endure this horrible parasitic nematode one of the worst cases that I've seen so far has come from Wellsboro, the golden toad. The parasitic nematode that these guys have affects their lungs, conquers their stomachs, which means that they have a loss of appetite and they start to get really thin. This horrible parasite will continue to devastate and annihilate these animals from the inside. Wellsboro had endured some of the worst suffering that this parasite had to offer. He lost a lot of weight, he was very thin, he lacked an appetite, and he was slowly dying. This was one of the worst things to watch because he's such a beautiful colored toad, and it was not something that I had in mind exposing him to this parasite. So just like Ace and just like the Dumpy family, Wellsboro had undergone a little bit more intense treatment to be brought back. I'm happy to say Wellsboro, from his first fecal exam, appears to be negative for the parasites. He's the first confirmed animal of the PA Woods and Forest YouTube channel to be confirmed negative. However, the vet has made a very important note of all of this going on. We should not just rely on one fecal sample to determine whether Wellsboro here or any other animal is healthy they're going to have to go through a rigorous testing amount of fecal exams before they're able to hibernate if they're native or if they're able to go to a new enclosure if they're exotic. So that's the challenge that awaits every single animal of the PA Woods and Forest ecosystem. Wellsboro is actually more on his way than what everybody else is having the first negative fecal exam to come back. Hopefully in the next coming weeks, I'll have some good news for you that he's negative and he's able to begin the protocol for hibernation. So that way, not only can we expand his life, but he can also thrive in captivity. One animal that might be outside of the grasps of this parasite is this beautiful unnamed female toad who was rescued not too long ago. This beautiful female has been in my hands only for a limited amount of time, 
but I've carefully made sure not to expose her to anything that would contain these parasites. She's gotten new soil, she's gotten a tank that was well cleaned. This little female toad has had a lot of advantages that the other toads and other animals have not. Hopefully we'll come up with a name for her soon. Maybe we can even have you help if you leave a comment below. But the goal is to get this little female toad healthy and away from the parasitic nematode's grasp. So we're going to be continuously monitoring her. She doesn't need to see the vet just yet. We're going to be trying to treat the animals that have the parasite. But at some point in the near future, she is going to meet the vet and she's probably going to hibernate sometime down the road after some of the animals are treated. So getting back to one of the main features of this video specifically is the dumpy family. Even though they have these parasites, it's very important to note that life does not change for these frogs inside the PA Woods and Forest community. Max and Spurgeon have been getting hand fed by me for quite some time now. Even though Spurgeon is not one of the most active frogs inside the enclosure, he still has begun trusting me to hand feed him. Even though Spurgeon is not one of the most active and confident frogs inside the dumpy family, he still allows me to have the privilege of hand feeding him. But this causes sometimes a little bit of a rift between him and Max. You see, Max only believes that the crickets are for her. So when Spurgeon took her cricket, she came the whole way over to this side of the enclosure and she let him know how she felt. I believe Max was sending him a message that, hey, this is my cricket. This is my food. What are you doing? As Spurgeon laid there like a bump on a log, Max looked right at the camera and I don't know if she was sending the message more to Spurgeon or if she was sending the message to me, but it was very clear while I had the camera rolling in one hand, I needed to get over there with my left hand and offer her a cricket so she didn't feel upset or frustrated at Spurgeon. She needed to be reminded that she is still Max, she's still the one that I enjoy hand feeding and that there is no competition. After she was fed the cricket, you can see a nice frog smile. Even though the dumpy family, white tree frogs are known for their faces that look like they're smiling. Even though Max was given this nice treat and there were crickets running around the enclosure, she noticed that Spurgeon was doing something a little bit uncharacteristic. For whatever reason, she decided to lunge at him. Spurgeon was not getting a cricket this time. He was actually shedding. After a little bit of time, I think Max actually realized that he was shedding. So he was of no interest to her anymore, and Max decided to leave. As I had the opportunity to watch Spurgeon shedding, I thought it would be a really interesting clip to share with you guys how frogs actually deal with their shed. Unlike snakes and reptiles, amphibians, specifically frogs, love to eat their shed. And it's actually a good practice. It gives them a lot of nutrients and it is actually something that benefits the frog. While Spurgeon was shedding, Max still wanted me to make sure that I didn't forget about her. Sometimes I swear she acts like a little kid, but that's the most 
exciting and fun part about this little frog. She's got such a personality. And just like that, after he's done shedding, Spurgeon is looking for a meal. The Dumpy family has been a really important part to the PA Woods and Forest community. Right now, they are struggling to battle the parasite, but so is the Gray Army. Regardless on where you stand inside the PA Woods and Forest community, this is a serious battle that's going on right now for the lives of these animals. As it unfolds, we will continue to update you and we'll also talk about the future of the frog forests, all the animals that live there, and also the lives of the animals inside the PA Woods and Forest community. Thank you, please like and subscribe.